Happy you guys are here. Uh, I want to ask a question right off the top. How many people think that I look like a douchebag? Great. Uh, you know the applause hurts a little more than just saying yes, right? Um, I know I look like a douchebag. Uh, it does have some downfalls. Like one of the problems of looking like a douchebag is people just try to fight me sometimes for no reason. Like I was hanging out the other night and this dude came up to me and he was like, hey man, are you looking at me? And I was like, no dude, I'm not looking at you. He was like, let's settle this outside. And I was like, dad, chill. <laughs> I also know I look like a douchebag because every time I go to Walgreens, no matter what, I ask the associate for it, they always take me to the aisle with the Axe body spray every single time. I'm like, bro, I need a chapstick, but how did you know I was running low? That's crazy. <laughs> What is going on here? <laughs> Everyone's drinking. Uh, I'm a little bit of a drinker. I've been down here for a little bit. Uh, you gotta drink and drive a little bit, right? You gotta do it, you know? Uh, the other night I was driving home from a comedy show and I knew that I was really drunk because I drove past a car dealership and the first thought in my mind was, wow, that place is packed. <laughs> what is that? What is that, a new restaurant? Must be amazing because there's cars on the inside. What is that about? What is that about? Does anybody here want to admit to drunk driving and getting a DUI? Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. DUI? You shouldn't clap. Just raise your hand. I like to clap. You're like, right here, bro. Let's do it again. Come on. You're like, working on it tonight. Where's my vodka soda? Uh, I don't have any DUIs, surprisingly, but I feel like because I have a microphone, I should tell you guys, do not drink and drive, right? It's bad. You're going to get in trouble, you know? But I will say, how awesome was it when you drink and drive and make it home? Yeah. That's amazing, because the whole way home, you're just freaking out. One eye open, like, oh my god, I don't want to do this. It's be so expensive. And then, and then you pull in your driveway and you're like, fuck the police. Get a little cocky, start backing out. Shit, I'm gonna go back around the block. This is too easy. <laughs> yeah. It's COVID times. Uh, I've been unemployed for a little bit now. They got me thinking about the, the jobs that I've had in the past. Uh, I used to work at Olive Garden. You guys eat at Olive Garden? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what their slogan is now, but it used to be when you're here, your family, when I worked there. So I would take that seriously. What I would do is I would go to every table, I would take their orders, and then I would just never come back. <laughs> <laughs> I worked at Applebee's a long time ago. I don't, obviously, I don't, I mean, maybe I do work there. I don't work there anymore. I went home recently uh, for the holidays, went to Applebee's with my family. This is a real story, by the way. This is not me trying to make up something for the joke. We had a waitress. She was a nice lady. She took our orders. After she brought our food, she came back to do, like, the table check to make sure we're okay. Except when she came back to do that, she brought her newborn baby with her. <laughs> Two month old baby, she brought the baby to the table. I was like, I'm confused. Is she training the baby to, to work here? Like what, what is happening? She introduced us to the baby. The baby's name was Lucas. We like went with it. I'm like what is going on here? Then they walked away and my mom goes, wow, Applebee's has really gone downhill. I was like, mom, when was Applebee's ever uphill? And that's when I realized my parents are pieces of shit. <laughs> you guys belong at Applebee's. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I'm staying in Delray Beach down here. Delray Beach is the rehab capital of the world. Did you guys know that? Yeah. <laughs> you said that a little too seriously. Like, yes, I was there for six weeks when I first got down here. Delray Beach. <laughs> but that got me thinking. I was like, look, I was like, you know, I said I drink a lot. Uh, there's a lot of anonymous groups. There's Alcoholics Anonymous. There's Narcotics Anonymous. You guys know there's an Overeaters Anonymous? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Overeaters Anonymous has to be the least anonymous of the anonymous groups. Right? You're like, it's the big guy in the corner. He's part of it. <laughs> a little too mean? I don't know. I mentioned I drink a lot. I do. I read a study recently that said men can drink four drinks a night and it's okay. You're not an alcoholic. Yeah. Women, it's only two, so you're all alcoholics. Uh, I'm just kidding. Men, four drinks a night, right? So what I did is I tweaked that study a little bit. I don't drink at all Monday through Thursday, and then on Friday I have 32 drinks. Oh, and that's when I'll get my first DUI, that Friday. <laughs> I do drink a lot. I also travel a lot for comedy, which made me realize recently, the only place you can drink before like 9 a.m. and still have a family is the airport. You guys ever notice that? You can be drinking a Bloody Mary at the airport at like 6.30 in the morning. You're like, it's okay, I'm going somewhere. 
it's a rehab bad to fly to Delray. Uh, I do, I, and sometimes people can be judgmental even at the airport. Like the last time I was at the airport, I was doing that. I was drinking a Bloody Mary. It was like 6.45 in the morning. And the dude next to me was just staring at me. Finally, I looked over and he was just like, come on, man. Doing things a little early to be drinking. I was like, dude, we're at the airport. He was like, you work here. I was like, all right. Guess I'll head back to the cockpit. <laughs> See, I like that part of the joke because I don't feel like I look as much like a pilot as I look like a male flight attendant. You know? I don't feel like this look says, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be taking off in about five minutes. I feel like this look is more like peanuts or pretzels. <laughs> if you're lucky, you'll get old, big boy. <laughs> yeah. Flying right now is crazy with all this COVID stuff. I took a flight recently. It was a cross-country flight. It was $11. That's like too cheap, right? I think it's too cheap. $11, it should not cost you more to get to the airport than to fly out of the airport, you know? I just feel like $11 is so cheap that if that plane crashed, no one's gonna ask what happened. And even if they do, they're like, dude, what happened to that plane? Why did it crash? You're like, $11 is why. There was no gas in the tank. The plane didn't take off. It just rolled off the runway into the woods. <laughs> Been taking Ubers too. I, uh, I found out recently in an Uber the driver was talking to me. Uh, do you guys like when the driver talks to you? No, no. You do. One does, three don't. I like that. I'm on the. I'm on like in the middle. I'm just like I wish there was just like a a button I could hit on the Uber app. Like I don't want to be fucking talked to tonight. But like in a nice way. Like I'll tip you extra if you just leave me alone. You know. But this guy was talking. He actually told me something I appreciate. They have Uber helicopters. Do you guys know about that? Uber helicopter, it's a real thing. It was pissing me off. I was like, who the hell takes Uber helicopter? And then it hit me. Uber helicopter is for a guy on a first date that's going real bad, and he just wants to throw a Hail Mary to try to get laid that night, right? Like, she's not making eye contact at the table. She's been to the bathroom a bunch. Finally, last time back from the bathroom, he's like, hey, I know this date's not going well. I actually paid the check, and I also got you an Uber. Do you mind if I just walk you out? And she's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And they got to the parking lot, there's a fucking helicopter sitting there. <laughs> You can't tell me that girl's not gonna be like, um, I'm gonna give him a second chance. <laughs> and then they get in only to find out it's Uber helicopter pool. <laughs> like back to step one. <laughs> Just thinking about the people I, uh, I've been, you know, you, you date a lot. I mean, COVID is weird, but like, you still gotta date, you know? I've been on a lot of dates. Uh, my favorite type of girl to date, I like dating black women, I do. What's up? You guys like, you like white boys? Yeah, see, I love dating black chicks because black chicks like taking me on like I'm a new project. They do. They're like, ooh, white boy, I'm going to teach you how to fuck. And I go right along with it. I'm like, no, teach me how to fuck. I don't know. All right, guys, that's my job. Enjoy that show. Thanks so much. Yeah.